let us discuss about the international neuroblastoma staging system. There are actually four stages uh, of the neuroblastoma. There's stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, and stage 4. As you can see in the picture, that the stage 1 is having a localized tumor, and that tumor can be completely removed through surgery with or without the microscopic residual disease. And the representative ipsilateral non-adherent lymph nodes are usually negative for the tumor, while the nodes that are adherent to the primary tumor, they may be positive for the tumor. Then we have stage 2, which is divided into stage A, 2A, and stage 2B. In stage 2A, we have localized tumor, but in this you have incomplete removal through surgery, and the representative ipsilateral non-adherent lymph nodes are negative for the tumor microscopically. Then we have stage 2B in which we have localized tumor that can or cannot be removed through surgery. And here the ipsilateral non-adherent lymph nodes are actually positive for the tumor. While uh, the contralateral lymph nodes are enlarged, but they are negative for the tumor microscopically. Now we have stage 3, and this stage 3 must meet one of the three categories. The first is the tumor crosses the vertical midline of the body and is not able to be removed through surgically. And the lymph nodes in that area may or may not be positive for the cancer okay so it is definitely not localized tumor or the tumor is restricted to one side of the body but there are lymph nodes on the opposite side of the body that is the contralateral lymph nodes are actually positive for the cancer or the tumor is located in the middle of the chest or abdomen and extends or attached lymph nodes extend to both sides of the body and is not able to be removed now we have stage 4 in which any primary tumor in you know in stage 4 we have dissemination proper dissemination so in stage 4 any primary tumor that disseminates to distant lymph nodes bone bone marrow liver skin or other organs is actually uh, defined as stage 4 tumor now we have a special type of tumor which is called stage 4s tumor in which the localized primary tumor as defined for the stages 1, 2a and 2b with dissemination that is limited to skin, liver and our bone and our bone marrow and stage 4s is actually limited to infants younger than one year okay so stage 4 is, uh, is actually a special type of uh, tumor now unfortunately most of the cases, okay, 60% to 80% of the children actually present with stage 3 or stage 4 tumor, okay, which are the high risk stages, while only 20% to 40% actually presented with stages 1, 2A, 2B, or 4S neuroblastomas, okay, which are actually not so high risk uh, factors for the neuroblastoma. Now, we're going to talk about some of the prognostic factors in neuroblastoma that lead to either favorable prognosis or unfavorable prognosis if if the neuroblastoma is in stage 1 stage 2a stage 2b or in 4s or if the uh, age of the infant is less than 18 months or if the uh, histological evidence of Schwannian stoma and gangliocytic differentiation is present or if the mitosis karyorexis index is actually less than 200 by 500 cells, okay? Or if the DNA uh, polyide, which we're going to discuss later on, is it present in hyperdiploid or near diploid stage? Or if the NYMC gene is not amplified, okay? Then all these actually lead to favorable prognosis. Why, on the other hand, if the stage of the tumor is in stage 3 or 4, if the age of the infant is greater than 18 months, if there is evidence of Schwannian stroma and gangliocytic differentiation, if there's no evidence of uh, such uh, Schwannian stroma and gangliocytic differentiation, 
if you have uh, mitosis to carry rexis index graded in 200 by 500 or if you have a DNA polyploidy uh, sorry DNA polyploidy in near diploid state and if you have NY, uh, NYMC gene which is actually amplified then these are all lead to unfavorable prognosis and neuroblastoma and this uh, mitosis uh, and karyorexis index is actually defined as the number of mitotic or karyorexic cells per 5000 tumor cells in random foci or the DNA polyidy is actually a test that measures the DNA content within the tumor cells okay now let us discuss about some of the clinical course and prognostic prognostic features okay we've already just discussed some of the prognostic factors let us discuss about the clinical course now in young children you would see if they have neuroblastoma they have large abdominal mass they may have fever weight loss while in older children they may not come to attention until the metastasis produce particular manifestations such as bone pain respiratory systems uh, symptoms, gastrointestinal com uh, complaints, they metastasize widely to liver, lungs, bones, and bone marrow. Okay, and uh, exothomus and ecchymosis may also be present because this periorbital region is actually a common metastatic site. Bladder and bowel dysfunction may be present, while in newness, this disseminated neuroblastoma may be present with multiple cutaneous metastases that cause deep blue discoloration of the skin. And because of this, you have the blueberry muffin baby, as you can see in the picture. About 90% of the neuroblastomas actually produce catecholamines, and this elevated blood levels of catecholamines and uh, elevated urine levels of the metabolites such as VMA and HVA are important diagnostic features. Although there is uh, elevation of catecholamines, but the hypertension is very rare. Now, these ganglioneuroma, unlike their counterpart, they produce either asymptomatic mass lesions or symptoms that are related to compression. Now, based on the collection of prognostic factors present in a given patient, they are classified as either low, intermediate, or high risk patients. Okay, long term survival in the first two categories that is, in a low and intermediate category, is about 80 to 90 percent of the patients, while less than 40 percent of the patients in the high risk category are long term survival. Okay, so long term survival in the first two categories is about 80 percent to 90 percent. Now, let's just discuss in detail. A little bit detail about some of the important prognostic factors which we've already described while uh, the age and stage are actually the very important prognostic factors if the neuroblastomas are present at stages 1 2 a 2 b then they tend to have an excellent prognosis and uh, if they're uh, if the infant is actually or if the uh, neuroblastoma is in the stage 4 s then uh, the chances that the disease to regress spontaneously is possible now uh, for the age the 18 months actually emerge as a critical point in the terms of prognosis if the children younger than 18 months of age have neuroblastoma then they have excellent prognosis uh, while if the children are older than 18 months and they fall either into the category of intermediate or they fall into the category of high-risk patients especially if they have NYMC amplification while the morphological changes which have already discussed the presence of Schwannian stroma they are independent prognostic variables in neuroblastic tumors okay and very important and the the prognostic factor that has the most profound impact this is actually the amplification of the NYMC oncogene now if this NYMC uh, oncogene is present then either if the patient is actually present uh, in the stage 1 to a 2 b or if the patient is even younger than 18 months but if the patient has nymc amplification then they undoubtedly fall into the high risk category and this nymc is located on the distal short arm of chromosome 2 nymc amplification is present about 20 percent to 30 percent of primary tumors 
and uh, again this NYMC amplification is currently the most important genetic abnormality that is associated with wrist uh, stratification of neoblastic tumors. Another important thing is the ploidy of the tumor cells that actually correlates with the outcome in children less than two years. Okay, less than two years if you can detect the ploidy then it will tell you about the prognostic or the prognostic feature, the prognosis, but more than two years of this, this is not really the good prognosis factor. And the neoblastomas can be divided into two categories, the neodiploid or the hyperploid uh, type of ploidy. Now, the neodiploid actually have worse prognosis because they harbor generalized genomic instability with multiple unbrandless translocations and chromosomal rearrangements. While the hyperdiploid, that is also uh, often near triploid, they have better prognosis. Mm, they have defect in the mitotic machinery that leads to chromosomal long disjunctions, but the banial karyotypes. Um, other than age, stage, ploidy, NYMC amplification, and the histological evidence, uh, which are the primary. Uh, factors that actually tells us about the prognosis of the disease we have several additional molecular variables that have been described with the prognostic amplifications while the most uh, important ones include the hemizygous deletion of the distal short arm of chromosome 1 the partial gain of the distal long arm of the chromosome 17 is present in about 15 percent of the tumors and the expression of the specific neurotrophin receptor is also a prognostic marker for neuroblastoma.